This week on Maker Update, a bird with rocket power. My hovercraft is full of leaves. Eating the goatee and a simple solution for rotational positioning. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingartner and I hope you're all doing great. It's busy times, so let's get right into it with the project of the week. Humans have come up with a lot of different ways to make machines take flight. But the one that always seems to vex us is the way birds do it, with wings. Sure, we can make things fly with thrust and fixed wings, but not the way nature does it, with wings that move. Works by Design is exploring this one by making an ornithopter, a flying machine that flaps its wings to fly. The original goal for this is to build a machine that can fly vertically. The trick to this is taking a look at the hovering behavior of hummingbirds. You might not see it until you watch them on a high-speed camera, but they manage to generate upward thrust on both the forward and backward stroke of their wings. Because the underside can swirl back and forth below the top rib, the wing can generate lift no matter which direction it's moving in. And that's what they're trying to recreate here. One of the first sacrifices that needed to be made in this design is eliminating electric motors. They're just too heavy for the lift needed. Instead, it will use pressurized air. One of the coolest considerations is the motor design, one that can use air pressure to drive the rotational motor to move the wings, but can also use the waist pressure as thrust to give it some extra boost. They originally wanted to use disposable CO2 cartridges for the thrust, but it was a little too uncontrollable and the cartridges were too heavy. So it turned into an exercise in tethered flight. But stick around for the explorations in engine and mechanical design, flexing wing designs, iterations of thrust jets, and more. It's a crazy project and it deserves your attention. More projects. Simone Yetch wants to feed you hair. Not actual hair, and no, not angel hair pasta either, but that's getting close. She wants to make a machine that extrudes pasta, but from the hair follicles of a mannequin. She originally began with this rubber mannequin head in the hope that the pasta would be pushed out by this inflated basketball. Sometimes you just gotta try something to see it not work. She ended up with this different mannequin head and she would use a pasta gun to extrude it out this goatee shape on its chin. Which is even weirder? Whatever the outcome, it's always great fun to see Simone tackle a problem and see it to its conclusion. From the channel RC Life On, we have this project for creating a life-sized hovercraft made from RC controllable motors. I gotta say up front, there's something about this motor that makes me really uncomfortable. I think it's because it looks like the motors on my mini drone, but scaled up to the size of my own arm span. Still, you get to see how a machine like this comes together. The frame, the skirt, the thrust, lift, fans, and everything. It's a fun build. And over on his channel, Zach Builds has a deep love for his Nintendo 64. Deep enough that he wants to modernize it so he can play it today. His first step is to crack the case and give it a good cleaning. And then modernize the power input and video output. The crazy thing is that for the HDMI output board is that he needs to capture the video output directly from the chip. So he needs to drag solder the ribbon cable directly to it. No pressure. For the power, he's using our good old friend USB-C power delivery. He's got a PD breakout board to deliver the right voltage and amperage to the N64 mainboard over a USB wall ward. The other cool takeaway from this project is knowing about these micro soldering practice boards. They're exactly what they sound like. Boards you can practice techniques like drag soldering where you're not worried about the outcome because you don't need their components to do anything. Soldering isn't hard, but the cost of failure can be both frustrating 
and catastrophic. You can use these to practice your chops. Time for some tips and tools. If you're interested in stepping up your Halloween or Christmas decorations, one path you can take is projection mapping. This is where you can use a projector from a fixed position and use it to give each element of your house its own unique visual flair. This video from Break It Yourself takes you through his journey of using projection mapping for his holiday decorations. He covers projectors, reflective coverings, cooling, software, design, the whole lot. From Hackaday, I learned about this Arduino sticker dispenser by Mr. Innovative. Through a considered path of tight pulleys, he's able to direct the path of a continuous loom and peel away the stickers from their backing, easy to apply to their packaging. There's a custom PCB to house an Arduino Nano and the motor driver necessary to drive the stickers. The machine even makes use of an IR sensor to automatically detect when a sticker has been removed in order to advance the next one. And finally, from Adafruit, we have a guide on the BN0055 Absolute Orientation Sensor. If you've ever tried to use a straight off the shelf nine degree of freedom breakout board, you've no doubt banged your head against the problem of calibrating all three sensors so they can provide you with useful positioning data. This is a breakout board that does all the hard work in the background and in return gives you hopefully helpful quaternion, Euler, and vector data for your project. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Sean Himmel has a video in his machine learning series about hyperparameters. These are all the parameters that exist on the periphery of your machine learning model but can still have a profound impact on how it performs. He'll show you how to use the AX framework to tune your hyperparameters to get your best results. All right, and that is gonna do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and hit subscribe with the bell so you don't miss the next one. If you're in the area, check out the Maker Fair Rochester this weekend at the Rochester Riverside Convention Center. As always, great big thanks to DigiKey for making this whole show possible and to you for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon.